Well, today we celebrate the greatest day in history, the day that death was defeated, the day the friends of Jesus stared into an empty tomb and the angel of the Lord declared to them, he is not here, he is alive. Let's worship together this morning. next song, I was going to share a verse with you guys. It's Romans 8, 11, and it says, 
If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Whoa! to this next song i want to highlight second corinthians 5 17 it says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation the old has passed away and see the new has come this next song glorious day is all about being a new creation in the name of jesus christ and the goodness of god that surrounds it buried beneath my sin Who could carry that kind of weight 
It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried Your freedom is all that I know I want to share with you Revelation 1, 4 through 5, which says, Grace and peace to you from the one who was, who always is, and who is still to come, from the sevenfold spirit before his throne, and from Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness to these things, the first to rise from the dead, and the ruler of all the kings of the world.
Happy Easter to everyone who's watching, or as I like to call today, Resurrection Day. Uh, Pastor Caleb opened up our service reading from the book of Matthew, where 2,000 years ago we saw that Jesus was not in that empty tomb. He is risen. He is alive. And I pray that you can celebrate that fact today. Listen, Easter is the day on which our entire faith hinges upon. And today we kick off a brand new three-part series called The Way, The Truth, and The Life. It's a series all about Jesus, who he is, and why you need him in your life. But first, let me start off with a story from history. Long before there were planes, trains, and automobiles, and Amazon Prime, the main way that people and businesses shipped goods was by sea. All throughout the 1800s, American and European businessmen were trying to find a cheaper and quicker route to get from the Atlantic to the Pacific with their goods. Now, the French made an attempt in 1880 to build a canal in Central America, but after nine years of work and the loss of nearly 20,000 lives, they went bankrupt. And that's when U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt stepped in and helped Panama secure independence, which led to signing the deal for the construction of the Panama Canal. Completed in 1914, it was proclaimed a major foreign policy achievement. The canal opened up a pathway between North and South America that redefined international travel and commerce. A new way had been created and it changed the world. Every now and then, something so monumental throughout the course of history happens that it changes the way we live, it changes the way we talk and act and think. Now the Panama Canal, it opened up a whole new way, quite literally, from one side of the world to the other. And it took off about five months of travel time. It was a game changer. Listen, there have been global events, acts of bravery, and messages throughout culture that have shaped culture. Some messages have come from dictators that have torn people down. Other messages have come from revolutionaries that have helped people rise up in hope. Uh, one such message came about 2,000 years ago from a revolutionary Jewish carpenter by the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Here's what he said in John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, for thousands of years up to this point, mankind had this unquenchable desire to know the meaning of life, who they were, who was God, and they wanted to see God. And in just a brilliant flash here, Jesus opens up the whole door when he says, I am the way. 
You want to know the meaning of life? I'll show you. You want to know what truth is? Let me define it. You want to know the way to the Father? Follow me. You want to see God? Look at me. In fact, Jesus told one of his friends, Philip, in this same exact passage, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now, John was the author of this chapter, and John had an agenda. He had a mission behind writing his gospel. He wants you to believe. 98 action verbs are in his gospel with this word believe. It's a book with 21 chapters. Nine of those chapters focus on one week of Jesus' life, the Passion. And of those nine chapters, seven chapters focus in on one day of his life. Jesus lived almost 33 years on this earth. John zooms in on one day. Why? Because he wants you to believe in Jesus. So let's back up a little bit uh, from this passage in John to the chapter before. And there's a conversation taking place between Jesus and his disciples. Three of his disciples kind of dominate this conversation. Peter, Philip, and Thomas. Now we've got to understand that when the Bible was originally written, it wasn't in this format with chapters and verses. It was one continuous story. And John's gospel is just like that, one continuous story. So Jesus wouldn't have taken a break between chapters 13 and 14. It's not like Jesus told his disciples, hey, wait, let's pause for intermission here. No, now in John 13, this is where uh, Peter tells Jesus, I will lay down my life for you. And of course, Jesus being the truth teller that he is, he tells Peter, no, in fact, you're actually gonna deny me three times before the rooster, before the rooster crows this morning. Jesus tells him, in fact, you're not supposed to lay down your life for me, it's the other way around. And that's how John chapter 13 ends. But in the very next breath, Jesus continues the conversation in John chapter 14. Here's what it says. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And that's when Thomas, who we all know is doubting Thomas. Yes, he's the same Thomas that told Jesus, show me your hands so that I can have proof after the resurrection. That Thomas says this in John 14, 5, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? How can we know the way? I would argue that this is the question that we all have at some point. How can we know the way? That's the quintessential question of life. But to fully understand the way that Jesus is talking about, you first have to know what the gospel is. Do you know what the gospel is? I would venture to say that if you went out onto the streets and asked 20 different people, what is the gospel? You'd come back with 20 different answers. Yes, in the original Greek, the gospel translates to good news, but what is the good news? Let me tell you, Luke 4, 17 to 21. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Hashtag mic drop. Now I love how Dr. Dick Foth puts the gospel. It's like this, Jesus tells you, I'll leave my place, I'll come to your place, I'll take your place, and then we'll go back to my place. Jesus leaves a where and is taking us to a where by himself being the way. I am the way. Now that I am is, is the key to the scripture. We've seen it before in the Bible. If you go all the way back to the story of Moses, Moses is the guy who leads the Israelites out of captivity, out of Egypt. And Moses has this encounter on the backside of a desert with God. This is the moment at the burning bush in Exodus chapter three. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. This I am language is the most stable and secure name that ever existed. When everything else fades and crumbles and shakes, God remains. I am. 
Now, throughout the book of John, uh, Jesus has seven I am statements that reveals parts of his identity. If you want to know who Jesus is, look at these seven I am statements. I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the vine, and finally, the way, the truth, and the life. Take a moment and just look at these seven descriptors of Jesus. These are all answers to our human condition. Whatever you need for sustenance, I am. Whatever you need to see ahead, I am. Whenever you need comfort, hope, peace, guidance, and understanding, I am that. Jesus is the way. And whoever follows him finds the way. In fact, the early church that we see in the book of Acts right after the Gospels, this is the beginning era of Christianity, they were actually referred to as the way. In Acts chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, we read, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, there it is, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Listen, when Jesus said, I am the way, it would have been to a mostly Jewish audience, people who had grown up under Mosaic law. Now the Mosaic law came from the original 10 commandments, which God gave to Moses. These 10 commandments weren't just rules, they were a way of life. And religion took this way and put a heavy yoke on it so that people who tried to follow it would be oppressed. Now, in fact, Jewish tradition tells us that there are about 613 laws that stemmed off of these original 10 commandments. 613, that's a heavy burden. So when Jesus summed up the law and the prophets when he said the great commandment, and you know this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus is taking all 613 laws and boiling it down to love. And then he makes it even easier when he says, you know what, just look at me and do that. He says, I am the way. That would have been considered blasphemous, even outrageous back in the day, unless it was true. Theologian John Stott, he puts it like this, Jesus is not just another signpost, he is the destination to which all signs point. Now it's important to note, Jesus didn't say I am a way, no, he said, I am the way. Jesus is the exclusive way to the Father, but he's the most inclusive of all time in his invitation. Listen to this, he invites the outcast, the sinner, the broken, the hurting. Jesus invites the Jew and the Gentile, the old and the young, male and female, rich and poor, everyone is welcome. Jesus is the way, you just have to go to him. He's the only way. C.S. Lewis tells us that you have to take Jesus either as a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. So many people today classify Jesus as a great prophet. They have no problem thinking about him as a philosopher, a servant leader, or just a great person in history. The problem is Jesus doesn't give you that option. See, we live in a culture with a lot of options. In fact, we have so many options that most of the time we don't know what we want. You want to know one of the hardest questions I have in my marriage? What do you want for dinner? See, Sarah and I have such a hard time picking out a meal or a restaurant because we live in Nashville and there are so many options and they're all good. Life has a lot of options. They might be good, but only one of them is God. And John wants you to believe in that option. His name is Jesus. John 14, 11, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. See, the disciples had followed Jesus for a few years. They had seen him walk on water, turn water to wine, heal the sick, cast out demons, make miracle food. And literally just a few chapters before this, they saw Jesus raise his friend Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus is saying, look, believe in me or at least believe in the works that you've seen me do. Because you cannot argue with testimony. 
I love the story in John chapter 9 where Jesus heals the blind man by spitting in some mud and rubbing it into his eyes. This guy's life is changed. He's walking with a new swagger. Everything's different about him. And he goes into town and the religious leaders try to confront him and they want to catch him in a mistake. And they, they kind of call out Jesus for healing him on the Sabbath. And this guy says, look, all I know is I was once blind and now I see. And that's good enough for me. Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus transforms lives. I've met drug, addi drug addicts that have been set free. I've met depressed people who are now living with hope. I've met victims of the worst type of crime in humanity now living with peace and joy. Jesus is in the transformation business. He changes everything and he changed my life. So he tells Philip in John 14, if nothing else, just believe in what you've seen. And in just a few days time, Jesus would show his disciples the greatest miracle ever recorded in history. He was put on trial, wrongly convicted, wrongly accused, wrongly put on a Roman cross. But it was all setting up this gigantic moment where Jesus would show everyone that he really is the way, the truth and the life through his resurrection. See, when the tomb was empty and Jesus showed up again, his disciples finally realized Jesus is the way. We all want to find our way. But I want to tell you today that in order to find your way, you have to know the way. See, Jesus is the guide in the wilderness of life. A few years ago, I went on a wilderness hike up on the border of Montana and Idaho, seven miles into the St. Joe National Forest. And uh, I got a little bit impatient on the way out. I broke ahead of the group and I gotta admit, I got lost. And it was really scary because I remember from watching all of those National Geographic specials that Montana has bears, big ones. And after about an hour of wandering in the woods, I finally heard a voice. It was the voice of our group guide. And it led me out of the wilderness and into safety. Jesus is the voice guiding us like a good shepherd. He's our direction, he's our compass, leading us to life. See, the cross displayed his great love, but the empty tomb displays his great life. And he's offering it to anyone who would believe. Today, I would tell you the same thing that John was telling his early audience. Believe in Jesus. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. If you want to know the meaning of life, if you're seeking after the truth, if you wanna know the way to God, it's Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for sending your son, God, Jesus to die on a cross, but not to stay there. No, we know that 2000 years ago, he was not found in that empty tomb. He is alive, he is risen, and he gives us life today. Thank you for sending the way, the truth, and the life that we might know our way to the Father in heaven. And it comes through your son, Jesus. Hey, right now, I just wanna pray for anyone who wants to put their faith in this Jesus that we've been talking about this morning. This Jesus that is the reason for Easter. This Jesus, the most famous name uttered throughout the last 2000 years. It's the name above every other name. And when you call upon the name of the Lord, it tells us in the book of Romans that you will be saved. Whatever your situation today, I know if you need hope, Jesus is the answer. I know if you need peace, Jesus is the answer. If you're struggling and you need joy or you want more love in your life, Jesus is the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So Father, we pray right now for anyone who wants to put their faith in you today, that you would wrap around them with your love and your affection, that they would know the good shepherd today in a brand new way. Thank you for your love, thank you for the cross, and thank you for the resurrection. We pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus, amen. Well, if you put your faith in Jesus for the very first time, I want you to send us an email, info at bridgesnashville.com, or shoot us a text, 615-436-2378. I would love to pray with you over the phone, 
You made the best decision you could have ever made. Hey, right now our worship team is gonna lead us in a song declaring the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. As we go into this last period of worship, I just wanna share a scripture out of John. Uh, John 11:25 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. This last song, Resurrecting, is all about Jesus' resurrection from the grave and how it's a blessing to our lives each and every day.
so washed in vain Was borrowed for three days His body there would not remain Our God has robbed the Sunday. Listen, we know it's a non-traditional Easter service, and of all the churches that are streaming online, we're so glad you decided to join with us today. We just have a few announcements for you before we let you go today. First of all, if this is your first time joining us, we would love to connect with you. And the way that we can do that is if you go to bridgesnashville.com slash connect and we will connect with you this week. We'd love to get to know you better. We'd love to be praying with you about any prayer needs that you may have. So be sure to go online and join us there. Also, if you are a member of Bridges Nashville and you'd like to join us in worshiping God through our tithe and offering, you can do that as well a couple of different ways. If you have the Tithely app on your phone, you can give right there. Or if you wanna to go to bridgesnashville.com slash give, you can sow your seed there as well. And finally, we're really, really excited to let everybody know that our new single, Jesus You Are, is out on every digital platform. And listen, we are really praying and believing God for this to be an anthem of hope, an anthem of peace. The song is all about lifting up the name of Jesus, and it's so timely during this Easter season. So go download that today. And as we say every week, when you tune out, when you log off, you're not leaving his presence. His presence will go with you. His presence will go before you. God bless you guys. <laughs>